I'm so excited for this video right now. Like I'm really, really excited about this video because when this specific line came out, uh, I think it came out in 2018, I had so many people on my channel, like so many people saying, please review these fragrances. Please, please, please tell us your thoughts. Tell us your opinions. Do you like these fragrances? Please tell us what you think. So I'm finally here two years later to review Kaoli fragrances. Now, I do want to say, obviously, if you guys follow me, I just got back from Dubai where I actually met Mona Katan. And I just quickly have to say something because I really have to just share my experience with you guys because I was fangirling so hard meeting Mona. I obviously uh, was familiar with who Mona Katan was, Huda, Huda Beauty, Huda Katan. I was very familiar with who uh, these beauty influencers were. So I never thought I would be uh, get to a point in my YouTube career where I'd get to actually meet Mona. And I just have to say like, whoa, she is the nicest person. One of the nicest people I have met in this YouTube, social media, fragrance, beauty industry world. She was so kind to me, like so kind. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Obviously you never know when you see someone on social media and then you meet them in real life. You're not really sure if they're gonna be the same, if they're gonna be a little different. But I can tell you guys 100% Mona Katan is so incredibly kind and sweet and genuine and she was so welcoming to me. So I just wanted to quickly say that and I also want to say this is 100% not sponsored. Uh, Mona did not ask me to make a video at all, but I was genuinely shocked with her fragrances because I had never smelled them before I went to Dubai. I had never tried her fragrances. I never tried the line. I didn't really know uh, when a fragrance brand is launched by someone in the beauty world, you never really know what's gonna happen. So when I smelled her fragrances, I was like, whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. These are actually freaking incredible. So I'm really excited to be reviewing her fragrances now today. Also, I went into her uh, perfume room, which I saw her perfume review on YouTube, her like perfume closet tour. Uh, I can't remember, like a long, long, long time ago. And I was like, oh my God. And I was standing in the perfume room. So I was like, like I was about to faint. And I also quickly want to say like, knowing how many fragrances that Mona has tested in her life, how many fragrance brands she wears. She wears Parfum de Mali, she wears Killian, she wears Tom Ford, like every single niche brand, designer brand that you could imagine, Mona has a fragrance from. So she's not just wearing her own fragrances, she's wearing every fragrance that you could even imagine. So for me, that made her a lot more credible to me that she's not just uh, promoting her own brand and speaking about her own brand, she still loves other brands, which really uh, I gained like I uh, I really respected her for this, and I think that that's why her fragrances have been uh, a massive success in my personal opinion. So, anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling. Let's get into the video. At this point, right now, filming the video, she has five fragrances um, in the Kaoli line, and I'm gonna talk about the first one that just launched yesterday. And I was one of the first people to have it, which like, like I was dead. <laughs> and it is called Deja Vu White Flower 57. Now, whoa, I, yeah. I am obsessed with this scent, like 100%. Uh, and that is it. That is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> no, honestly, I sprayed it. I've got four of the fragrances on me right now. Now, this is the most beautiful, like beautiful melange of white flowers that I have tried in a very long time. It is a mixture of some tuberose, some jasmine, some orange blossom, a little bit of some vanilla in there as well. There's definitely a sweetness to the florals, like, yeah, there's definitely a sweetness, a creaminess to it. I would say you don't really get one floral more than the other. It's a beautiful mixture of all of the florals, all of the white flowers mixed together. 
And I would have to say that it's a very, very likable floral fragrance. I think florals can be pretty difficult at times, depending on what florals you use in the fragrance. For instance, tuberose can be really overpowering in a scent. Rose, again, can be really overpowering in a fragrance. But this fragrance, I don't know how she's done it, but you barely smell like one single white floral. It's a mixture of all of them with some beautiful oriental vanilla in there and some creaminess as well. Maybe a little citrusiness in the opening, but it's I don't really get any citruses. I mostly get beautiful white flowers mixed with some vanilla. And it's just, oh, it is just stunning. Maybe even as well. Uh, like a whipped cream note or something like this. Like I really have no idea what the notes are in this fragrance. I cannot find the notes right now at this stage, but there seems to be like this kind of whipped cream note in the scent. Or maybe I'm crazy, but I have to tell you guys, like I'm going to show you right now. This is how much I love this scent. I'm going to wear it tonight. Oh, and also look at her sprays. Like, whoa. Well, so now that I just drenched myself in it, that is my thoughts on the new Deja Vu White Flower 57. Now I have to say to you guys, if you like the same fragrances as me, you really have to try this one. You really have to try this fragrance. I think it is incredible. And I'm, again, I'm not just saying this because I met Mona and she's a real sweet person and I loved her so much. It's not because of that at all, because I will tell you there's one fragrance in here that I'm like, it's okay. Citrus 08. So this is one from the original line now. The Citrus 08. I actually sprayed over here. Grapefruit, rose, bergamot, oak moss, pink pepper, musk, tonka bean, blackberry, and rhubarb. Now, in my opinion, you get a lot of uh, grapefruit, like a lot. It is a little bitter, which I love. There's definitely the pink pepper note that you smell, which gives it a little bit of a spicy kick to it. Just a little bit, but it to me, I love it. Like, I love the little spicy kick. I'm like only smelling the other fragrance now. You definitely get a little underlying bit of rose in there, but it's definitely not a rose fragrance. It's a citrusy fragrance. It's uh, a little bitter, a little spicy, a little punchy. I really love this as a citrus scent because what's unique about it is that it's not just a citrus. It's a citrus with a little bit of rose a little bit of uh, fruits in there, a little bit of pink pepper. It's not just citruses. So I really do love this one. It's not groundbreaking. It's not uh, gonna blow your mind, but as a citrus scent goes, I love it. I love it. You can actually mix it with the white flowers for sure. And that's another thing with Kayali, you can layer them if you want to. You can wear them by themselves. You can lay them with your other perfumes. It's just up to you of how you wanna do it. But I've actually been layering. I'm gonna tell you guys which ones. So yeah, I love the Citrus 08 as well. So next up we have the Elixir 11. So I sprayed it over here. Oh. Oh my God. I seriously, this one is definitely one of my favorites from the line. I love it. It is rose, red apple, patchouli, jasmine, amber, and vanilla. And It is just beautiful. It's a soft rose scent. It's not too much, too in your face, too much. It's nothing like this. It is a beautiful feminine soft rose scent with some patchouli, which gives it a little bit of more of a, a classy sort of feeling to it. You definitely get the apple. I would say the apple is definitely one of the main players in the fragrance, which gives it kind of a, not, not necessarily fruity, but this little like fresh, juicy feeling to the scent. Again, the patchouli makes it kind of refined and a little classy. And I just really enjoy this one. I would say what you get is like this kind of uh, fresh, juicy uh, rose with a little bit of patchouli in the background. And I really, there's a hair on my face, right? There we go. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I really love this one. And I actually mix this with one of my fragrance Dubois fragrances, which is called Oud, Oud Rose Intense. And I mix it with this and oh my God, like I think that you could mix this with a lot of different fragrances, but I really enjoy this one as well. I think I'm gonna wear this a lot, the Elixir 11. Okay, so let's talk about the next one, which is Musk number 12. And this was the only one in the line where I'm just a little bit like, it's nice, it's nice again. Oh, and I do wanna say the lab that makes uh, Kaoli fragrances is Ferminish, which is 
the biggest lab in fragrance in the fragrance industry and i know that she works with like incredible perfumers so i when i found this out because i didn't really know much about the brands before uh, i met mona and she told me a lot and i was really like wow and you can smell it in the juice you feel it in the bottles in the packaging in the cap in the spray art you really feel the quality which i really loved about her brand i would say it's in between being so niche is over here designers over here and i would say it's like her brand sits like around here so it's like it's really good the fragrances are pretty unique but they're really likable and uh yeah that's just my thought so the musk fragrance is the one that kind of is a little a little boring for my taste personally but again perfect if you just want to layer it with scents i find musk fragrances like like something like this really easy to layer with anything like you could literally layer this fragrance with any fragrance and it'll smell totally fine so the notes in here are musk vanilla lotus freesia sandalwood and jasmine but to be honest with you guys i just get kind of a clean soapy musk smell not too much it's definitely not too musky where it's like a little it's not like this at all but for me it's just a little boring like i could never wear this fragrance by itself but i could mix it like i would mix it with this i could mix it with the citrus i could mix it with the elixir i could mix it with any of my fragrances so that's just my thoughts but i wouldn't recommend purchasing this one if you just want to purchase one kaali to wear by itself i wouldn't go for the musk but it still smells fantastic and very high quality again so the musk number 12 is also really good but like i said i have others that i prefer the final fragrance is definitely one of the best from the line in my opinion and this is the vanilla 28 oh my god <sighs> okay <clears throat> excuse me gourmand lovers gourmand lovers that are watching me right now if you want a standard good high quality uh wearable not too intense not too sickly sweet vanilla this is your go-to i absolutely love this it has brown sugar it has vanilla orchid for me it's along the lines of like tihota from indoor paris but not as intense as that vanilla which some of you guys told me that you found that too sickly it actually reminds me a little bit of one of my favorite vanillas that I don't talk about anymore because it was discontinued years ago from Martin Mikalev. And you guys all begged me to tell you where I got it and it's all sold out everywhere. It'll never be made again. And it's called Vanille Orient from Mikalev. Never will be made again, but it also had orchid in it. And this has orchid in it and I'm thinking that's why it's reminding me of this scent. It is just so good. Warm vanilla, some brown sugar. It's just amazing. It's a simple vanilla. I'm not gonna uh, tell you guys anything different. It's a simple vanilla, but it smells fantastic. So it's just up to you. Uh, if you want a really complex vanilla, something with a lot of edges to it, then this is not your go-to. But for me, I can see myself wearing this a lot. I love vanillas like this that are simple, but smell just like your perfect vanilla scent. So that is Vanilla 28, the last fragrance that I'm gonna to review today. So that is it, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about uh, Kaali fragrances. Like I said, um, this is not a paid video. Like I said, um, I these are all of my opinions on my own. Nobody is influencing me. Obviously I met Mona and I absolutely adored her, but that doesn't mean that that's going to affect how I review her fragrances. So let's talk about the ones that I recommend the most. These would be my two that I recommend the most. The new Deja Vu is incredible. Like it's gorgeous, beautiful, easy to wear, white floral, feminine, sweet, vanilla, creamy, this little whipped cream note in there that just smells addictive. Then we have the Vanilla 28. Standard, beautiful vanilla. It's not complex, but smells incredible. Brown sugar, vanilla orchid. A little bit reminds me of my uh, my discontinued baby from Mikalev. And I just, I love it. And then I would also recommend the Elixir. I love the Elixir. Yeah, it's a, uh, for me, this one actually, now that I'm smelling it, it could actually, that's kind of funny. 
yeah, I'm just thinking now that I'm smelling it again, it actually could be a perfect work fragrance. Like this reminds me actually of a work fragrance. Like for the office, it's a rose, it's a little professional. It's got a bit of a fruity kind of a... Anyway, I'm going to stop now, but I love this one as well. Then I would say the citrus and then finally the musk. The musk is the one that kind of I don't, I wouldn't probably buy by itself. So anyways, that is my review. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Finally, I got so many requests to do a video on Kayali, so I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. I feel like I've said video so many times. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. I love you, Mona.